I'm Les Mood with Signwatts. Today we have Dr. Sheba Balmick of Signwatts as well. And we're going to talk about V2G. What is V2G and what's stopping it and what is the future of V2G. Welcome, Sheba. Thank you, Les. Thanks for speaking again. Absolutely. So, you know, the question comes up, why, why have we not seen V2G happen yet? Well, um, it, it, it takes leadership and innovation. And then um, um, coupled with that, it's basically the regulation process, the regulatory process, because V2G, if done the right way, uh, it has um, the, the potential to transform the electric system as we know today. What are some of the uh, technological hurdles that, that V2G faces to mark the mass adoption? Uh, so, uh, so coupled with, um, so when 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 we only focus on the technology aspect of it, we find that vehicle electrification, coupled with how it's connected to the grid itself, both in terms of charging, and providing the platform that vehicles themselves would need in the future, it requires true innovation. Um, it is, it is at its very core, beyond just the battery piece, which is the energy density and the energy and the power density of the batteries themselves and the longevity aspect of it, which we believe we are almost there today. It is the powering and the power electronics that would bring about the change that we are looking for. What are, what are some of the, the regulatory or uh, policy issues surrounding vehicle to grid? Um, so there are multiple stakeholders involved in the process, but um, the entire effort seems like for doing it the right way, which is the vehicle is the grid and part of the grid, and the, and the, and the grid is also built into the electric vehicle, is being led by California through her um, wishes of her people in Senate Bill 676 um, that allows vehicle grid integration. What is the current status in this regulatory policy process? Uh, the current status is evolving. Um, we are finding that, um, to, to phrase it properly, uh, we are finding that uh, the process is requiring some uh, adult supervision, so to speak, from the regulators that would speed up and be able to implement this on time, based on the, again, based on the wishes of uh, California and her citizens, and which is uh, baked in and instituted in law called the Senate Bill 676. So, you know, the industry itself and, uh, and the regulators and the leaders in the state have, and the nation have, a role to play in, in innovation. And, uh, but what is the role of the industry and where, where does the industry stand? What are some of the industry-related organizations that are involved in, in achieving the ambitions and the will of the people in Senate Bill 676? Yeah, so the multiple stakeholders uh, are involved are the OEMs, the original equipment manufacturers, the vehicle manufacturers, and their ecosystem around that, tier one suppliers and various different suppliers into that ecosystem, that's one. The other piece um, comes from the utilities because they would have to play the role of allowing these electric vehicles be part of the grid. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and the electric vehicles and the grid itself to help the electric vehicles. So it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship in that sense. So the utilities, and then finally what comes in are the certification and the standards committees that are formed by the industry, both on the electric vehicle side and the utility side that would then uh, seamlessly allow, allowing new innovation to bring about the change that we are looking for, so it, it is a it is a it is a multi-stakeholder process, and then finally um, laying the ground groundwork for investors to come in to make this all happen. 
So, Sheba, what are some of the institutions that, that are involved in the industry and which ones are you involved in? Yeah, um, we, are, uh, we are involved in the, uh, the standards committees and in multiple aspects of this with the industry, the OEM, the equipment manufacturers. We are also involved uh, on the utility side, basically with respect to the implementation of Senate Bill 676 and the integration with the grid uh, through their certification process, the regulatory, the utility regulatory certification process. So we are involved on that side. And uh, we have also gotten involved in helping the state bring the solutions uh, by the regulatory process and we are part of, as a party, in that process on two separate engagements through the state, through the California Public Utility Commission. So what's the, what's the timeline for the implementation of Senate Bill 676? Uh, it's very well baked in the in the bill itself, it's uh, by 2030, it has to be fully deployed, uh, reducing the rates for ratepayers, making electric mobility uh, not a vision, but fully implemented for mass scale adoption. 2030? 2030, mm -hmm. that's correct. Awesome. So what, what can the state of California do to ensure that Senate Bill 676 is implemented fully on time? Well, I mean, prior to answering that question, maybe, I mean, what we need to explain is the time for incrementalism has passed, right? So we cannot, we don't have the time to do this in little building blocks and, and little steps at a time. The, the reason is this. OEMs and investors and the markets need to have full visibility so that they can deploy capital. We are talking about tens to hundreds of billions of dollars in the infrastructure. Nobody is going to do that without a full complete visibility of what is the world that we are going to be um, embracing in about 10 years time frame. And so it is instrumental and that the, that the regulators are able to depict that world of the future in the implementation of, again, California's people's wishes through that is enshrined in uh, the state bill uh, or the Senate bill 676. As, as they say, California, as California goes, so goes the nation and there's certainly a role in innovation. I will add to that as the U.S. goes, mm -hmm. so goes the world. Right, exactly. So it is, it is um, crucial that California, uh, which California has always led the world with innovation and implementation strategies, that California has to drive the, drive the bus, so to speak. So, you know, speaking, speaking of the world, what will the world look like when V2G is fully implemented and Senate Bill 676 and the leadership of California is fulfilled? Um, we probably are going to see uh, a completely different landscape with respect to how electricity is generated, utilized, and distributed on our network. Um, that is not to say that we won't have the centralized grid platform. However, the vehicles that we are deploying today and going forward into the future would become the vehicles of this monumental transformation. They provide that missing link, which is the energy storage piece that is ubiquitously distributed on the network, allowing seamless integration of solar and other renewable energy resources because all renewable re energy resources, as we know, are intermittent, right? So all of that energy storage co-located where we consume the energy allows for us to completely re-architect and rethink our grid platform, delivering energy equity for all, and also bring in the resiliency, reliability, and electric mobility for all. 
Thank you, Shiba, for sharing your insights about the leadership of California, the state of V2G, and the future that we can all have with V2G. Really appreciate hearing about that. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, moving this energy and this innovation forward with us. We will look forward to uh, California's implementation of Senate Bill 676. If you have any questions or you'd like to be involved, Shiba, where can uh, people get involved and where can they find SignMods? We are present on various different social media, uh, primarily on LinkedIn and other places, but mainly on LinkedIn. And um, probably the best place to reach us is through SignWatch.com. Absolutely. Together we're driving energy forward. Thank you for joining us. See you soon.